Hello, welcome to a Sunday Cafe Rollist for a change. Uh, I'm happy to uh, make things comfortable for my guests. And uh, as you know, what I love is showcasing guests across languages and borders. And today I have a French speaking designer who's got games in English for you. Uh, Com, would you mind introducing yourself briefly? Yeah, so so uh, thanks. All, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on a on a Sunday. Uh, that, that was indeed uh, the the only uh, day where we could both be available, and I know that's not uh, always very practical. So so really, I appreciate that. Um, so I guess an English speaking audience would uh, mainly know me. Uh, well, the, the first thing I, I published in English were my uh, monthly mini RPGs, which cool. I did uh, between uh, 2017 and 2019. Uh, if you if you participated in um, in the the big uh, each EU uh, bundle, well, which was in uh, I think last July or something, the, the big uh, bundle for uh, um, racial equality. Uh, with uh, like a, a bajillion games in it, uh, that was in it as well. So, so you have, uh, even if you don't know it, you have maybe uh, these these monthly RPGs in your possessions. Well, I um, didn't know it, and I got it, so I can go <laughs> right, check well, it out now. Yeah, well, that, that's it. <laughs> and and then uh, yeah, and then last year I uh, participated in the second edition of uh, Zine Quest, the, the big uh, Kickstarter uh, event, uh, which is now uh, now a yearly thing, I guess, uh, with uh, Green Dawn Mall. Uh, which did did very well uh, at the time and and since. So that uh, I was really happy with the uh, with the welcome uh, that it uh, received. And this year I'm uh, doing Dean Quest again, Dean Quest number three with uh, Two Summers. So which which is my new game, uh, kickstarting right now actually. I interact a bit with the, the gauntlet, and I, I believe there's a lot of fans of trophy, trophy gold, and so on. And I think Green Door Mall was related to that, uh, or is that is that a, is that a thing like Poet by the Apocalypse, or you know, where you get different games uh, with the same base? I'm not even sure what trophy is actually. <laughs> yeah. So well, I I played so trophy as as far as I understand is a. Uh, is started as a as a one shot uh, game called Trophy Dark. Um, I'm I'm not sure if that was in the uh, intention of the I forgot the, the name of the of the creator of the game, but I'm not sure if he int intended it from the start to uh, grow and, and develop as different games. Uh, but so you've got Trophy Dark, which is more uh, horror uh, oriented, and then Trophy Gold. Which plays more like uh, uh, OSR games uh, of of exploration and uh, and where you, supposedly you play the same character over uh, uh, different sessions and and it's really based on on exploration and, and uh, finding treasures and, and things like that and um, so it's it's a game system a game mechanic which has been uh, has proven very popular and and so there were uh, dozens and dozens of um, uh, incursions, I think, is the is the term they use for their uh, uh, dungeons or, or adventures. And um, when I and they they did a contest uh, last year, so a few months after the uh, the financing of, of Green Dawn Mall, and they uh, held a contest where you could uh, create your own incursion for for the game. Um, and at the time, I was interesting interested, sorry, in. Um, uh, creating sort of spin-offs, I guess, of Green Dawn Mall, seeing, you know, how I could uh, develop the concept of uh, exploring uh, an endless distorted mall, which is really the, the base concept of Green Dawn Mall, uh, into other types of games. And so really the connection with an OSR style game of exploration was uh, immediate for me. I, I had to do something uh, around this and so i i that's why i wrote this this sort of little spin-off of, of green on mall um uh motorized by by trophy i guess you could say um but it's really two different games like you can you can play uh the trophy gold version of, of green Dawn mall without um having ever read green Dawn mall the, the 
the game itself and vice versa. Uh, it's more like, uh, yeah, a, a variant of, of it in a way. Okay. And then I, 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 I did other stuff like that. Like I created a, a five minute version of Green Dawn Mall, uh, which is a, a, solo, uh, a solo RPG where you just play for five minutes uh, exploring the mall, and again for that I used uh, another uh, template. That was that was another game jam that was uh, launched uh, on Edge. So, yeah, I guess the the idea ca came from uh, Vivien Ferson uh, with his uh, Reniverse, who which he developed first in um, uh, what's the title in English? Uh, Lost in the Rain, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, Perdu sous la pluie. So I guess it's it would be yeah, Lost Perdu in the rain. sous la pluie Sh should be something like this. Um, which then he developed in Libreté, which was recently translated in English. Um, and then Libreté itself uh, had a sort of a, um, a spin off. Ah, I forgot the title, but uh, where you can play teenagers driving uh, mechas, uh, so really something totally different, and uh, which again new uh, a new iteration uh, this year in French with Explorateur de Bruin, uh, which is again more OSR oriented actually. So I really like this this idea that you can have this concept for your game, and then you can. Uh, adapt this concept to different uh, styles of playing and dif different game mechanics and see you know how much stays the same if you can retain this this concept or uh, if it becomes something completely different uh, and and green Dawn mold the concept uh, of green Dawn mold was so rich that i felt that something like this was was possible i'm not sure i'll do much more i think uh, two or three games around the same universe is, is enough for me. Uh, I've, got, I've got too many other ideas to, to, you know, just sit on them. But that was really interesting to do. Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, I was a bit surprised uh, uh, about uh, Vivian doing doing something also with OSR because OSR sounds a bit mechanical and and really you know sort of somewhat limited. So it's very interesting the concept of games which are a bit more i don't know flavor oriented and more indie for lack of a better term uh mm -hmm. having a variant using that that type of, of system did you were you surprised of the result of what it's like to explore green dawn mall with an osr system uh, things you did not expect happening um, I was a bit actually because uh, so I'm I'm not a big uh, specialist of, of OSR. Um, I did play a game of, of uh, Trophy Dog before, so so I, I I you know tried the system myself before before adapting for for my game. Um, but what really changed? Uh, I was talking earlier about what what's what was the same and was different when you create a, a variant of your game, and I was really um, surprised to see that when you adapt Green Normal into an OSR setting, uh, it, became, it becomes much more, not necessarily violent, but um, much more orient oriented around uh, aggression. Uh, you know, uh, in Green Dawn Mall uh, itself, um, there's not a lot of fighting. There's no fighting rules and... and um, Actually, I think in the GM advice section, I, I write that uh, most of the encounters that the PCs can have uh, should not revolve around pure uh, aggression, that there's, there should always be something more and that uh, it's more interesting to, to have a conversation basically with, with someone, even if there are some, some uh, creatures uh, which are definitely monsters uh, out to kill you, but they are really the minority. Um, and then in Trophy Gold, uh, there's no rules uh, for, for not, not only there's no rules for uh, dialogue and, and peaceful interaction, but also the game mechanics uh, and the game rules um, favor and even reward um, fighting and, and really uh, confronting uh, the monsters and the NPCs that you meet. So I had to... Um, tweak um, the encounter list a bit to make it more aggressive. And so if you play the two games side, side to side, for example, 
um, you could have the same encounter in the two games and one would be uh, possibly peaceful and the other one would be automatically aggressive. Uh, and I think I'm not sure, you know, if it's a, a characteristic of the OSR games in general, although they do uh, put an emphasis on, on fighting. So I, I guess um, it encourages uh, game designers and, and players as well to, to push uh, towards this, this uh, attitude. Uh, which which proved difficult in playtesting actually because my the the setting of, of green Dawn wall is not entirely made for that so the players had a hard time knowing you know should we explore and just kill everything that uh, goes in, in our way or should we uh, take a step back and try to investigate a little and uh, i was like yes you should do the, the second one <laughs> I, I guess it would be a rather different experience between people who who played the previous version of Green Dawn Mall and then moving it into the OSR version compared to someone who jumped straight away, straight yeah. from the OSR one, the expectation would be quite different. Yeah, sure, sure. Although to, to be perfectly honest, um this the, the trophy gold version, or maybe it will change after this interview, but the trophy gold version of Green Dawn Mall uh, didn't sell very well. <laughs> so it was offered for free uh to, to backers of the original game. So maybe they, they get a chance to to uh, play it. But I don't think it was played that much uh compared to the, the original version. But uh since it was more an experiment for me in terms of, of game designing. Uh, so you know, I I I don't mind my my games. I most of, it was the same with my with my mini RPGs. You know, most of them haven't been played by anyone but myself and my playtesters. But since they were uh, more an exercise in in game designing than anything else, that's that's fine for me. <laughs> so was that a reaction to this experience of designing a somewhat violent game with? Trophy Gold and Green Dawn Mall that you had to go to something I believe which is significantly different with two summers. Um, I don't I don't think it was a conscious uh, reaction, but it, it definitely you know when I look back at it and at the the process of creation, I think it definitely is. Uh, actually, um, the the first uh, spark of uh, two summers comes from another project I, I started working on with uh, Cédric Ferrand, uh, um, French Canadian uh, game designer. Uh, it's, it's a secret project, so I can't, I can't really uh, uh, talk about it much. Uh, but the, the, the basis of the project was more or less the same. Like uh, it was for a, for a, a campaign, uh, not, a, not a separate uh, game, but just a campaign for, for an existing game where you would play uh, teenagers in the country spending their summers in you know some some uh, deep country uh, village and uh, getting really bored and then suddenly they discover something extraordinary and they, they go on this wonderful adventure and um, so i my, my mind was on that and then I, I started to think oh that would be interesting to to see um the same uh, I, I think the, the first idea was uh, that would be interesting to see these species as adults uh, who remind, who reminisce about the, their teenage adventure, and then we would play flashbacks of that. And then, uh, as I kept thinking about it, I said, "Yeah, but wait, we we should actually play the two timelines at the same time. It would be much more interesting and and much more original." So, so that's how it uh, the, the original concept grew. Um, but you're right that then I I started. To, to, to think about it and you know especially when uh, it came the time to uh, advertise the game in, in a way uh, I realized that it was like the complete opposite of, of Green Dawn Mall because uh, Green Dawn Mall is, uh, is uh, the f more made for uh, one-shot adventures uh, it takes place entirely out uh, inside uh, and uh, it, the game mechanics are not exactly OSR, but uh, there's some some elements of that. And, and of course, it's very uh, very classic system of rolling the dice and, and things like that. And two summers uh, is designed to be played in campaigns. Uh, it takes place mostly outside. 
it's uh, a very sunny and light uh, atmosphere and, and tone, uh, whereas Green Dawn Mall is, is much darker and uh, it's diceless. So yeah, I think that unconsciously something in me must have thought, okay, let's, let's do something completely different from what you've done before and, and try something new. Uh, and I guess that the, the, you know, the state of the world uh, has certainly helped uh, in this decision because I, I wrote and uh, kickstarted uh, Green Dawn Mall just before uh, the start of the pandemic in France because the, the, the Kickstarter campaign was in February 2020 and so uh, a month after you know, the uh, trouble started. Um, and so I think I wasn't really up to... Uh, creating uh, another dark game of, of fighting and confrontation i think you know we've we've had enough of that let's let's have something that's that's uh, that's light and that uh, leaves us with a, a smile on our faces so it's not uh it because in terms of structure <laughs> it's somewhat similar friends gather yeah. as adults and they reminisce about what happened and maybe they face a threat so, but it, it's sunny. It's not uh, dark <laughs> and dangerous and uh, horrific. Then, mm -mm. yeah, sure. Um, the 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 comparison to it is 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 obvious, and and I, uh, you know, uh, many people ask me the, the same question. I, I think that's very fair because the the structure is exactly the same. Uh, actually, it's a good shorthand to to ex explain the game to to someone who doesn't know it. Um, and I think my, you know, the shortest. Uh, pitch that I can do for, for two summers is, okay, that's it. Imagine uh, Stephen King's It, then remove all the scary parts, and that's two summers, basically. Uh, that, that's, that's basically it. Um, uh, although I, we've just um, unlocked a, a stretch goal recently, <clears throat> uh, thanks to, to which I will uh, write a, a hacking game, a hacking guide, sorry, for the game. Um, and I think I'll try to, to reintroduce uh, this type of options, like, okay, if you want to make a darker campaign, if you want to have uh, scary, monstrous clowns uh, in your campaign, here's how you could do it. But that's, that's not the idea at the start. Um, and, and there's also no supernatural elements in the, in the basic concept. It's really a, a very... Uh, uh, realistic, I guess, uh, game, not realist because um, you're still, you know, having an adventure and, and things are a little exaggerated, but there's no supernatural elements. Okay, because for a second I thought it would be like, uh, take the concept of it, but you replace it with my neighbor Totoro, for instance. It's more <laughs> replace the adventure in the past in hit with the Goonies, I guess, or Stand By Me. Right, maybe. right. You, you keep you keep a big monster, but you make it fluffy instead of scary. That w that would be a good concept. <laughs> well, you can do a lot of acts uh, with with that concept. I guess you could do something uh, about. I mean, I love the idea of you find out what happened before in flashbacks and the idea you play the present and the past and you the two things unfold in parallels you could do a lot mm -hmm. of very exciting things with that i mean your 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 starting concept is already excellent but you could do i don't know uh, veterans from a war uh, you could do former lovers you could do um, 20th century boys is a uh, is a bit yeah. like that also uh, there's quite a few, I'm sure if you check TV tropes, you can find a, a few stories which are already like that, which uh, doesn't mean you need to emulate them all, but it's it's a testament to how much it speaks to people, this type of uh, story structure. No, oh, for, for sure. Actually, when I, when I, uh, when the stretch goal I, I mentioned previously was unlocked, uh, I asked on, on, on uh, social media, uh, I asked people, you know, what, what sort of things would you like me to to try my my hand on what sort of hacks would you like and i think 20th century boy was uh, boys was was mentioned um and other ideas which i didn't have but but which were uh, quite excellent uh, the idea for example that you played you know uh, several generations of of characters uh, for for example uh there was something about uh, i don't remember playing uh wizards or something um you know, putting it in, in space or whatever. Yeah, I, I think that's there's really a lot of things that, that are possible. Um, I'll probably, so um, I, uh, when was that? Last year, a couple months ago, 
I think in October or November of last year, I released uh, an SRD of, of Green Dawn Mall, which was something I, I wanted to do for a long time. So, you know, like, like a free uh, five page PDF, something like this with just the, the base rules of, of Green Dawn Mall for everyone to, to use and, and potentially uh, uh, create their own game uh, with it. Uh, and I think I'll do the same with, with two summers uh, somewhere down the road. Because uh, I really think that, that that's something that I love in, in when I read uh, other people's RPGs, this section about how to, uh, how to act this game, which is something that um, uh, PBTA games uh, frequently have, you know, like, okay, what if you want to play my game, but you remove this or you change that or you uh, tweak this a little and that... That's always something that's interesting for me. And I've, there's actually a, a handful of games um, where I never played the original version, but I played, uh, you know, a, a variant that was uh, uh, that was uh, suggested in the in the back pages. So if I can do the same with with two summers, that would be really cool. It's very interesting. This, uh, as I was saying a bit earlier, uh, I started mm -hmm. attending games and engaging a bit with the Gauntlet community. And that, that's a very strong culture of there of that there. So I played, like I played several hacks of Cthulhu Dark, and I'm very, I find it extremely appealing. But I never played Cthulhu Dark. I played version of it. So I, I'm not even sure if the bits I liked came from from the, the Cthulhu same, Dark yeah. uh, <laughs> thing. I'm just really looking forward for the version I played to come out because I'd like to play Call of Cthulhu or Night Black Agents Adventures with them and. Uh, yeah, I see them keeping bringing up Trophy, Forge in the Dark, and now uh, I played Brindlewood Bay, and I'm really, I'm really interested in trying to write my own carved in Brindlewood uh, game. It's it's quite fascinating this this ecosystem, this relationship with a community, which is okay. I created a core system and I make it available, which is smart because uh, technically there's no copyright on systems so anyway you cannot do anything about it so uh, it's an elegant way to say well i'm open to that thing which you could do even without my approval but still right. it's it's a, it's a much better move but i think in the end it benefits really everyone and yeah it's funny part but i mean like pbta i played masks i played well blades in the dark which now you got forge in the dark but blades in the dark was a pbta game if i remember correctly mm -hmm. But That's I don't right. think yeah. I will ever play Apocalypse World because I'm not, I'm not appealed by the setting. But it mm -mm -mm. it Same changed so much my own experience of gaming, just through its own repercussions. So, mm -mm -mm. so yeah, the, it's yeah, it's fascinating. And me designing my first game, uh, yeah, I'm, I'd be very curious of this relationship, seeing what's happening with with my ideas, and uh, I guess it could be. Not, not dangerous, but it could be frightening. It could be great. <laughs> At the same time, we'd be like, oh, wow, they did the derivation of Fatal using uh, two summers. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> no, but I think I, I think it's really... Um, uh, you're right that, that uh, I think uh, Apocalypse World uh, was probably not the first, but it was the, the first one where uh, this idea of... Uh, uh, reusing uh, existing rules uh, became uh, popular and, and really caught on. And there's so many uh, PBTA games now, uh, we, it's impossible to, to, uh, to count them. And um, uh, yeah, that, that's really something that that's, I, I also find uh, fascinating. And uh, you mentioned uh, Brindlewood Bay, and I think in, in this year's uh, ZineQuest, there's actually a, a game, I don't think the Kickstarter has launched yet, uh, which is supposed to be a, a hack of, of Brindlewood Bay. I, I didn't know that uh, it was included, like, I, I, what was the term that you used? Carved in, in Brindlewood, I think. Yeah, the um, author, actually just before the inquest, the author, uh, if I'm not mixing up people, Jason Cordoba, uh, was very yes. supportive and was telling people, I think he sort of organized it to support a several zine quest uh, endeavors oh, as part okay. of this, yeah. so he was really okay. If you need any advice, I know he gave he gave sort of mini seminars online uh, for people to join, where he was giving advice on how to do to do things. So he is right. extremely supportive of the idea, and I think I think it's a good move. Yeah, 
Well, it's uh, uh, what's interesting is that with this new wave of, of games, it's really, uh, I think it's almost baked in the, 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 the premise of the, well, the, the logic of, of selling the game, like the trophy games. Uh, I'm, I think uh, the, the SRDs and the logos and everything like this, uh, like that you, you were released before uh, the kickstart of like the complete uh, trophy, like trophy uh, dark, uh, gold and loom, I think uh, it's called. Uh, so it's really, it's, it's, it's encouraged by the authors and sometimes ahead of the, of the game itself. And uh, that's really cool for, from, a, from a designer point of view. Uh, that's really a, good, a cool, uh, you know, gift for for fans. But I think it's really also uh, it's also really smart from a, a marketing point of view because, of course, if you encourage people to to hack your game, it means that it will get probably if it works, uh, you know, be uh, become more uh, well known and uh, it will circulate more and it will also ensure that the, the game has a, a longer lifespan. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a good move. Uh, you know, there's no there's no losing point really. Uh, I, I don't see a negative side uh, on on that. So uh, of course, you know, uh, I'm I'm much less uh, famous and, and successful than the, the guys uh, behind these games. But uh, if I can do something like this, I I'll definitely do it. Yeah. Well, it's it's always start somewhere. There was there were not. Yeah. Vincent Baker <laughs> was not famous uh, from day one, as far as I'm aware. Uh, right, but uh, I find I find it interesting, you know, listening talking to you. Uh, you you come across as well, first of all quite aware of the English speaking scene, and second quite open minded to notions like that marketing. Uh, I find that interesting because listening to to podcasts and reading stuff from the the French tabletop community uh, and interviewing some of them, I know that marketing and this sort of notions. Uh, I always find that uh, people can uh, check their D-Rollis bingo card. Uh, uh, so I'm an architect. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's sort of this difference of, well, it also applies to cinema. I find in France, people tend to see themselves as artists, while in the US and Anglo-Saxon world, people tend to see themselves as craft people. So it's more slightly more commercially minded doesn't mean that it's it's not about the the craft or the beauty of it but it's more collective it's more uh, aware and mindful of the end user uh what's your position on that and what's your view on the the french community versus the the english community uh, or am i am i talking nonsense you think or or what's your own opinion I'm not on that? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm not sure I would agree with you because uh, I think, well, the the um, okay. So probably the difference between the two is that I would say uh, there's less of a French community that than there is an uh, an English speaking community. I don't think, you know, there are uh, French creators. Uh, uh, there's uh, people who know each other, but it's it's probably too small a scene to be to be called a scene actually mm. um uh and then within this uh this uh, uh now i i don't know <laughs> what word to use <laughs> let's say within this circle of, of of french creators um the people i know uh are also i don't think they would call themselves uh, artists and uh, i don't think they would position position their games on the artistic side because uh when you're uh, a one-man uh, operation or, or a two-man operation or whatever you 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 have no choice you have to be aware of uh, and pay attention to, to the commercial side uh and then for the bigger uh publishers like uh, black book editions or uh, sans detour for example to, to, to uh, just name the, the two uh, biggest uh, publishers in france uh, currently big, um, big and former big <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, they they are definitely on the on the commercial side, and actually they've been uh, criticized is a is a big word, but uh, they they uh, uh, it, it was um, that was interesting because a few years ago, well, uh, quite a, a number of years ago now, um, 
some people try to uh, interest in themselves in the in this commercial side uh, from an outsider point of view. And there's this uh, remark that that uh, is frequently uh, popping up in, in conversation when we talk about uh, the relation between money and RPGs in France is, uh, OK, can you show us the numbers? Uh, can you tell us, uh, you know, how many uh, copies of, of uh, such and such game have you, you have published? Because uh, we, we would be interested in knowing uh, how large is the uh, audience for RPGs in France. And very often when you, when you ask that, uh, publishers will, will not give you these numbers. And that's uh, seen by a lot of people as, uh, you know, oh, so uh, you're a big corporation. You don't want to, uh, to be uh, uh, transparent about this. Um, so I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. There's probably a lot of reasons why you, you wouldn't release numbers. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, I'm not a big corporation, so I cannot, I cannot speak on this, on this matter. But uh, uh, I find it interesting, interested that um, this sort of criticism um, I see very often in France. I don't think, so maybe that's because I'm not in the, in the right cycles, uh, uh, circles, sorry. But um, I don't often see this sort of conversations uh, in the USA, for example, uh, even if you know, there's uh, many more publishers uh, of the same size and bigger than the two I've, I've quoted for, for, for France. Uh, I don't know if that's because uh, people in the US are not interested in this sort of conversations or, uh, or it's, you know, it's just an, a non-subject, I don't know. Um, but to come back to, to what you were saying earlier, for, for my, my games and my creations, I, I would definitely uh, put myself uh, more on the uh, craft, craftsman uh, side. I think that's the word you used. Um, there's definitely, I'm, I'm not, uh, I, I said before that uh, uh, most of the games, the mini games I, I wrote were exercises in game design. Uh, and that's not the case for Green Dawn Mall in Two Summers, which were definitely created with an audience in mind, with the, the goal of not necessarily uh, making money with them, but selling them in this. In, uh, in, when I say selling, I mean, you know, just uh, uh, making it uh, uh, accessible to, to people so that people could, could uh, acquire it. Um, and so, uh, and so, yeah, I'm, 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 I write games that are meant to be played. Uh, you know, they are not, uh, uh, they are not uh, RPG books where you will see uh, beautiful illustrations and uh, short stories about the universe, which run, you know, fifty pages long. Uh, there's definitely an audience for for these type of books, and and uh, I don't, you know, I don't have any. Uh, any grudge against this type of books. It's just not, not what I do and not what I'm interested in. So I, you know, yeah, craftsmanship rather than uh, than uh, artist in his uh, ivory tower. <laughs> yeah, but the world of role-playing is, is a funny thing. Uh, after this, I'm recording an episode of the RPG Academy. We're gonna discuss uh, what would be sort of our pitch to Netflix if we were to propose a Dungeons and Dragons TV show. I'm not the biggest Dungeons and Dragons TV show, but I was making a bit of research uh, in terms of intellectual properties and, you know, profit margins and extra. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Dungeons and Dragons is even the big Dungeons and Dragons, which we keep looking at. It's very small. <laughs> it doesn't make it in like the, the 50 most profitable uh, whatever, and you would be surprised of what you'll find in there, like uh, like something which is three times more profitable than Dungeons & Dragon is uh, Fist of the North Star, so Ken Le Survivant for French viewers, which you would never right. think that. <laughs> and apparently it's part because they got Pachinko machine and they do shitload oh. of money with that. <laughs> but yeah, Dungeons & Dragon seems big to us. Uh, tabletop RPG industry, as an industry, it does does not do much. Uh, in terms of IP recognition, people have heard of Dungeons and Dragons, but they never quite managed to do something successful mainstream with it compared to other stuff which are, again, much, I mean, like World of Warcraft or even the Bourne movies, they, they're way more successful than right. that. 
And and even wizards, which again D&D we consider very large, uh, from what I know a bit from the inside, when they show up at meetings with their numbers in front of Hasbro and say, we made that much money this year, their, <laughs> their overlords tend to look at them like, what are you talking about? That's <laughs> that's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. We we sell we sell GI Joe figures. <laughs> we make more than that. You are you are so right, much more right. than my little pony. So for us it seems big, but like like wizards, they don't have they are not a load of budget to travel to Europe, for instance, to come to conventions and, and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So even the big players they're very small. So you're right. Then you move to France and you got the big player in France and they. I guess they got they employ four people. I guess full time uh, compared to. Right, right. I think with it it's like a hundred and fifty something like that full time in the US. Here in the UK they got two part time employees who work <laughs> more on Magic the Gathering than they do on Dungeons and Dragons. So right. it's scales of profitability. It's it's kind of weird. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're telling me that I, I should do a pachinko to summer's match. Oh yeah, is, is oh, that what you're telling me? <laughs> a green don't move pachinko. Which I I don't even yeah. know how pachinko works. I guess you you'd have balls in different uh, shops <laughs> and so on. So, yeah, or that, that would show. definitely work. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, well, that's interesting what you what you say about the uh, the uh, the numbers compared to the uh, the perception uh, of them and also the the cultural. Um, perception of of D and D nowadays, uh, you know, uh, if if you ask someone who, well, basically any any nerd and, and geek in the audience will know at least uh, the name D and D and and maybe will have you know uh, played it once in in their lives. Uh, many uh, showrunners and and uh, and and people in Hollywood, uh, you know, grew up with D and D, so it's it's really something well known. But not successful uh, in terms of uh, of, of numbers, uh, which you know puts us in a in, in a strange position because, uh, uh, as I said before, you know if if I come back to my own um, situation, I'm definitely not doing that to to make money. I've I've got a you know a job uh, uh, which uh, pays me for that, uh, but on the other hand. Uh, the the financial side is is important uh, i wouldn't do a kickstarter if i didn't need money uh i if, if i you know I, I i'm not interested in in uh, releasing my games for free because they would cost me money and from my uh, uh personal uh, you know on my personal level uh it would not cost much uh but it would still cost me so so that's not something i can i can afford uh uh, uh, what I mean is that it, it's interesting that you know uh, there's not a lot of money involved, but money still plays a big part. Yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, there was a tweet this week. There's a lot of tweet this week every week, but there was one which said, uh, "Do you have a hobby or do you have a second full time job in which you need to put money because <laughs> you're not making money, <laughs> you're <right>. just <laughs> throwing money at it." And it's uh, it's kind of true for a lot of us. Yeah, <laughs> no, that that's true. Um, but I mean, yeah, if if you want to to be, and I think that the the distinction you made between uh, you know a craftsman and an and an artist um, is also uh, 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 ah, I I I lost my English for a second. Uh, it's relevant here because uh, if you're an artist, uh, you can allow yourself to have this this attitude of you know I'm I'm not doing this for the money, so. Uh, just you just take all, all I do for free and, and enjoy, uh, which is what I did with my with my mini RPGs for a time. Uh, the French versions are all uh, available for free. Uh, they were at the start and they still are. Uh, not the English versions because uh, but they're like uh, one buck. I think now uh, you can get the whole collection for five five dollars, which is really not not that much. Um, but when you consider uh, RPGs from a, a craftsman uh, point of view, uh, then you you have to say, okay, you know, I'm I'm not necessarily doing this for the money, but uh, here's how much it cost me, and so that's why I'm charging you a little uh, for it. 
Um, and uh, of course, that gets complicated uh, by, by many things. Uh, one thing I observed, for example, now I'm, um, most of my RPG discovery I do on, on itch, uh, so itch.io, uh, where there are a lot of uh, indie games uh, released. Uh, I think there's probably 10 or 20 new games every day. Uh, but most of them, uh, the vast majority of these games are made uh, by, you know, uh, people who uh, are really uh, amateurs, but uh, I don't mean that uh, disrespectfully, you know, amateurs in the sense that they are, they, they are doing it uh, as it comes and, and they are not really necessarily interested in making games that uh, uh, stand on their two legs or that are playable or even interesting. They're just interesting in, interested in releasing their, their vision, which is, you know, excellent. Um, but then uh, you get uh, some weird stuff where you have a page with a two-line description of a game, no screenshots, and it costs $10. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I don't know, kid, your game sounds interested, interesting, but uh, I don't know anything about it. And um, I'm definitely not paying, you know, $10 for something I, I don't know anything about and which uh, could very well be a, a huge disappointment. Uh, so, and, and maybe this, this sort of, uh, of situation is created by the fact that, that uh, RPGs are not an industry, and so uh, uh, many people, myself included, don't really now know how to price their games and how to advert advertise them. And so, and there are so many games, uh, you know, available that, um, uh, yeah, it's it's strange. You know, uh, is it better to have these sort of games where uh, you're trying to not necessarily make a living, mm -hmm. but at least make some money out of them? Or is it better to release a ton of games for free and then uh, let people uh, uh, elect the best, so, so to speak? I don't know. Uh, but there's also a lot of different models. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know the specific example you, you give, but I, I can imagine that I see there's a, there's, there's a lot of designers who release their game and they, they would not need much of a description because what's happening is that actually what's happening is that they are paid by people who support them as individuals so they know That's the right. designer and either they support them via patreon or coffee something like that via a subscription model and they got a game every month or every three months and they might play one out of three of those games, but they, they like the individual, they like what they do in general, so they support them. And then that individual throws their game on each as a second-hand way to make additional money. Yeah, and at the same time, they don't want to, uh, you know, uh, don't cut, I don't know what's the right word, but they, they don't want to, to sell something on the cheap that they've been selling for a subscription price on their right. patreon so that, that could be the reason why maybe not maybe it's someone random uh throwing price <laughs> but yeah it's difficult to price those things because some people do it as a hobby just a hobby some people do it with a hobby with sort of professional ambitions but they're not pushing it very far uh, a lot of those people also can be from different contexts i mean we are i'm in the uk uh, i believe you're in france uh we've got a safety net of some kind i mean it's not great uh i can testify of that at the moment but we, we've got healthcare, we've got social care to some extent uh then we've got people who are not professional yet in the us but they they really want and really really need to become professionals because it's a matter of life and death uh mm -hmm. over there uh because it's three it's a hustle and you really need to do it and then you start entering to to levels of people who did manage to get there and be semi-professional or professional and 
and those things are not compartmentalized <laughs> you got you got people who ended up in a category without really planning because they lost their job mm -hmm. and suddenly it becomes their main income you got people who ended up in the oh i'm living out of my hobby that's great i never planned for that and uh right, actually right, i'm right. quite good at it and i was successful because uh, i was lucky and I, I was privileged of having different things so all of that is mixed up and then you got the, the black book edition you got the wizard of the code the modifiers and everybody's trying to price their stuff and everything is underpriced when you think of it compared to a video game but it's uh, yeah and then um, we've got Guillaume Gentil in the chat room was saying well artists uh, need to to be paid to, for their job yeah that's true uh and but you know in the podcasting streaming world i hear now players on a stream should be paid i'm on a stream i'm not paid uh <laughs> that stream could not afford to pay me uh because if they would divide the price uh, among people they would be uh, everybody would have 10 cents so yeah good luck with that <laughs> uh it's it's really weird and complicated uh i think we should all have a universal basic income and then we could do all of that <laughs> and be rewarded for it uh but uh yeah but i mean it's, really it's, it's 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 precisely it's precisely because it's not an industry that we've got all this mess because uh uh, we, you know, uh, yeah, RPGs are stuck in this weird place uh, between being a hobby and being a uh, not an industry, but uh, uh, something to to make money from. And uh, I guess when you're uh, uh, a real quote unquote uh, publisher, uh, th that you know, you 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 can uh, you have people who who know how to do this when you have to do everything yourself. Uh, it becomes in incredibly uh, complicated. Uh, uh, you know, well, for example, when I I had to think about the um, the uh, reward tiers for uh, two summers uh, compared to Green Dawn Mall and compared to everything that uh, that uh, is uh, currently being uh, uh, kickstarted with within Quest, and that was really a, a nightmare because. Uh, uh, Last year, I just looked at what everybody was doing and I did exactly the same thing uh, in terms of price. I said, okay, everybody uh, puts their PDF uh, tiers at uh, $5. Okay, I'm doing to do the same. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to think about it. And it nearly cost me uh, money actually to, to, to do something like that. So this year I'm like, okay, I'm not doing that mistake again. Let's, let's take a minute to, to think about it. Uh, but then you've got the stress of, okay, is this too high? Will people buy it? Uh, you know, two summers is is much more uh, an unusual game than in in terms of of what it offers than uh, Green Dawn Mall, for example. It's uh, more difficult to to uh, put it to fit it into one uh, specific category. So, uh, yeah, it was like um, uh, maybe if I if I price too hard, uh, too high, sorry, uh, I will have less people, etc these sort of questions and of course you know uh, that's not my job and i i know nothing about that this so uh that that was really i uh, in my view uh, at least that was really uh, risky to to because what i did this year is is slightly uh, in, increase the price of both the pdf and, and the printed versions and for me that was risky and then you know, I started the Kickstarter and, and it did even uh, better than uh, last year, even though uh, I think this year there's something like 300, maybe 400 projects uh, uh, during the whole month of, of January. Uh, last year, there were maybe half that number. Uh, so I guess some of my, of, of this success is due to the fact that uh, and, and that also uh, comes back to what uh, something you were saying earlier that now people know me a little, uh, especially in the English speaking scene, because uh, I've had some some comments on the Kickstarter page uh, saying, "Oh, I'm I'm here because of, of Green Dawn Mall." Basically, like the game you did last year was was really good, so uh, you know I'm I'm backing you uh, this year uh, one more time, uh, which is really strange for me, you know, because. Uh, that make, made me realize, all right, so now, now I'm an author, you know, now uh, people know, know me because of my games, uh, which was not the case before. And so, so yeah, that's, that's really strange and, and a good place to be at the, at the same time. But 
so so yeah it's it's really um it, even if you're if you're not uh, trying to make a living out of it it's it's complicated to think about this stuff so i really can't imagine the nightmares that it must be for people who as as you said uh need this stuff to to survive to pay the bills uh so so really uh you know uh uh, kudos for them because that, that must be I can't imagine how how they are doing it with this added pressure yeah it's yeah it's it's really tough to imagine I mean yeah uh, again I'm not in a great situation I got a coffee now if so if people want to <laughs> help me out uh, all the money you give to the coffee will go into into projects into the Oralist and uh, my own game Paris Gondo uh, but uh, yeah when you think with people uh, you know I, I didn't start that bad and my situation is not that awful compared to others so when you think uh, of people being in a, so much more difficult in your in my own country or abroad you're like wow that's that's actually impressive that you know the that people are not even more mad in the street and uh because yeah it it hurts uh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. there's a lot sure. of people hurting on that uh but so <laughs> going back to something more uh, rejoicing uh, so two summers is right now live on kickstarter as part of zine quest then so what's That's the right. structure yeah, what is. are the levels that can people uh support to what are the goals to unlock and so on uh? right so it's yeah it's it's currently live it's been it's been running for for a week and as i said i'm i'm really really surprised and, and happy uh, to, uh about the the uh uh, welcoming uh, it got uh, i uh, so far it's it exceeded my my ex expectations um we're at the end of the first week and uh, we're at the level where uh you know i i didn't think uh i would reach that amount until like uh, the beginning uh the first days of, of next week so really really good um so what you can get from a, from a, a backer point of point of view, uh, actually, I so the the, the money side of it will, will uh, comes back into two different uh, uh, in two different ways. First, uh, from the a backer point of view, if you don't get a lot of money, you can back at uh, just one euro, uh, which will give give you a, a full text only version of the game. So you can pay one euro and get the whole game right now uh it's it's already uh, uh published as a as a google doc and you can uh, have access to it uh which i i stole this idea from from many uh, kickstarters that i enjoyed uh because it's also it's a good way to allow people who with not a lot of money to to still contribute and it'll, it's also a good way for people in general to just you know if you're interested uh, get a first look at the game uh, read the whole game, see if it's for you, and then you can, if you want, um, pay a little more to get a, basically a more beautiful version of the game. But you'll get the same thing in terms of, of text. Uh, so if you want, the, 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 the PDF format uh, is 8 euros this year. Uh, so everything is in euros. Sorry, you'll, you'll have to uh, get your, your calculators out. Although I think that Kickstarter does the, the conversion for you. So... Uh, eight euros for the for the PDF version, and then for the print version, which also includes the PDF version, of course, uh, it's ten euros plus uh, shipping. Uh, so for international backers, uh, that amounts. I think I I did the math, and in dollars, it's about twenty dollars. I think for the yeah, about twenty dollars for. Uh, the printed version of the zine uh, plus shipping, uh, basically, because the, the uh, postal fees in France are just uh, outrageous. Uh, they're very simple. Uh, you've got two levels, France and international, but it gets very, very pricey. Uh, and then if, you're, if, you, if you do have a lot of money and you want to throw uh, some at me, you can pay 100 euros and uh, you'll get the option to have your face uh, included, your face or, or anything you want actually, included in one of the illustrations for, for the game, um, which is not something I usually do, but with this type of project, um, with a game that uh, you know, is about uh, the real world basically, and, and, and uh, uh, 
uh, teenage years of the characters. I thought that would be an interesting uh, idea for for people if they if they wanted to. Um, and then in terms of uh, of stretch goals, uh, I mentioned the the hacking guide uh, before, which is already unlocked. Uh, we've got some some extra illustrations uh, which are also unlocked and and about to be to be unlocked as well. And um, I didn't mention it yet on the Kickstarter page, but the the last goal I have in mind uh, will be something I also did for for Green Dawn Mall. Uh, and it will be basically giving more money to the people I work with, because the the artists that uh, I I paid for the game and the uh, uh, people who do the layout of the game uh, that's their bread and butter. You know, uh, contrary to me who uh, is doing that uh, uh, for pleasure, they are doing that, that uh, because that's their job, and I'm I'm paying them to do their job, but I'm paying them. Uh, very little money, actually. I'm, I'm not forcing them to do anything, but uh, you know the, the, the prices, the fees for artists and, and professional people in, in the RPG world are just uh, outrageously low. And so what I want to do is that uh, should we reach a certain amount, uh, which will probably be 3,000 euros, and, and we are not very far from that, actually. Uh, I, I think we'll we'll reach that before the end of, of next week. Uh, and so should we reach that amount, every euro beyond, beyond that amount will be split uh, four ways between me and my the, the three persons I, I work with uh, for this game. Uh, I did that last year for, for Green Dawn Mall, uh, which also nearly cost me money because I... I uh, had set uh, too low a bar for for that, but it uh, it allowed me to to pay uh, more uh, normally, I guess uh, the 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 people I I had worked with, and uh, that that was really important for me to to uh, make more money, not for me because I I don't really you know past a certain amount I've reimbursed myself. Uh, I've got everything I need to pay for stretch goals. So I, I do enjoy earning a little uh, from this game uh, because I put some hours in it, but I, I don't need that much. So if I can make some people uh, who need it more than me earn more, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. That's brilliant. Uh, just on the, the side of, uh, it just reminded me, uh, I'm not sure if it would have been helpful for you, but uh, Olivia Hill and uh, Philomena from uh, High Hunt, from uh, Machine Age uh, Productions, recently released a Google spreadsheet alongside a video explaining how to use it about, uh, yeah, and the purpose is for for creators to be able to calculate whether or not they can break even with their project. So I didn't have a proper look myself I, yet. I but... think I saw that actually. RPG budget worksheet. Yeah, I, I've got it uh, saved on my on my Google Drive. There's also a video which explains how to use it because I just had a quick oh, look and I was I like, oh, yeah, okay, uh, that needs a bit of... Uh, it's, not, <laughs> it's not snapping your fingers and it's done. You, it, no, it there's a lot of numbers. <laughs> but there's a video which explains how you do it. And so if people are interested, uh, I will include oh, the great. link in the description of the episode so so they can find it. Oh, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, sure. Because, uh, uh, I, you know, it's it's it, it has, I think it has limited use because, the, you know, it's not a one model fits all but it's definitely interesting uh, if only just to see uh, what you need to think about when you when you create a game and uh, you know there are some things that you you wouldn't necessarily think are necessary to pay for uh, there's always always more than you think to to that you need to pay for so to yeah that that's a really really good initiative and the thing to always for remember if you're doing zine quest or any game which is with books uh the first thing is when you ship it, uh, just say it's books. Don't say it's a game. Yes. Because the tax yes. is different at <laughs> games like that, which we got uh, to to pay a fee before getting them from the the border uh, agency. And second, uh, be cautious about adding dice or anything like that or putting it in a box mm. because then yeah. it stops yeah, yeah, being yeah, yeah. a book and it starts being 
a board game or a game and again it's it becomes a luxury item compared to a book which is not a luxury item and in many countries it means you're gonna have to cost much more in uh, fees for shipping so Mm -hmm. people be be aware from that Guillaume Gentil is leaving us uh, before he leaves. So a uh, big bisou uh, at Guillaume in the chat room. Yeah. He says that... Guillaume, Cook... Guillaume... Sorry, go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was, I was going to say that, that Guillaume was, was one of the first uh, big fans I had for my mini RPGs. We worked a lot together for, for my mini RPGs, actually. He did the cover from, uh, for my collection. And he's really a great guy all around. He, he wrote an excellent excellent game uh sonia um uh, and conan versus the ninjas uh, which you definitely should should uh, uh lo- look have a and look he, at and he was definitely an early fan because he says a uh, comb is an author since his first extraordinary small rpg published on trollon palu uh, a talented yes. author so there you go ah, merci guillaume des bisous uh we reached the one hour mark. Uh, is there anything remaining you wish to, to talk about? Uh, no, I think uh, I think we've covered uh, everything. Right. Well, well, not everything, but, but it, was, it was really, really interesting uh, conversation. Likewise, thanks so much for, for joining me. Uh, I'll include links to everything we mentioned uh, in the description of the episode sure. in YouTube and uh, in audio. Usually in audio, it takes quite a while before being released oh my son is waking up uh, right on time uh, <laughs> uh so uh but yeah uh, i will include direct links uh but uh, where can people find you where you wish to be found and uh and so on well okay so basically you can find me for conversation and, and mostly uh, advertising uh, myself you can find me on twitter uh, at Emosh, so that's E M O G K, and the same goes for for H, where I've got all my games in in French and English. Same same name, and I guess you'll you'll put the link in my uh, in, in the description for the episode. I definitely will, and all the links I will include my little tag, so uh, affiliate tag. So I should get maybe a few cents uh, when you make those purchase of those oh. excellent games. So so there you I, go. That would be my pleasure. Great. Well, thanks so much, Com, and uh, best wishes of success since it's already funded and more goals unlocked uh, with uh, two summers. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Uh, people, remember, leave a like on YouTube, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, follow us uh, here on Twitch, check the show on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so on. Please consider donating via coffee, Patreon, and so on. All of that uh, helps me keep the light on. Uh, the, the more support I get, the, the, the more encouraging it is for me emotionally to continue doing all the work I do for the podcast. But it, it also helps me invest in, in more stuff and more, uh, more projects. So uh, please, everyone, consider uh, doing that. Thanks, everyone. Bye.